Disaster Planning and Response Art Rescue is a first responder for the world of art, providing planning, packing, evacuation, conservation, and storage for all your treasured possessions. Alfano, and what we do here on the dinner party is I invite three celebrities that can be entertainers or politicians or sports figures and a known chef who cooks for them. So over food and wine and chocolate and some performances, the unscripted conversation flows. I, I went into audition and this, this really wonderful old gay director was, I, I was, I had I'd gotten out of Marine Corps boot camp, I was a reservist and I was about 15 pounds heavier and he went, I had a high and tight, he went, oh my God, who are you? Where'd you come from? You have to be in the show. <laughs> and I couldn't act, sing, or dance, or do anything. But he put me in the show anyway, and uh, and it started me. So somebody found you. They found me, wow. yeah. So I had no talent, no happened. discernible talent, but I was cute. <laughs> so it was, I was kind of like the male version of the Schwab story with Lana Turner, I think. Was Lana Turner? Yeah. One of those girls. So, so what are you now? Are still, where are we on talent? I'm where not, I'm no Lana Turner. Okay, anymore. okay, okay. But you're still cute. I'm I was still just gonna cute. say, you still got cute. You know, the arts is a wonderful place to end up and it's a great place to discover stuff. And I'm, I feel blessed that I did because when I started in One Shiny Moment, Chicago in 1983, it opened up doors for me. Yeah. I really like, I grew up in a very kind of cloistered, very conservative suburb of Chicago. Very, we had a lot of conservative, issues about them and I fled and when I came here I, and I got to the theater it was a great eye-opener about the language and mm. emotions and people and contact and missing each other and you know yeah. and then there was that, that weird moment of art once in a while you see yes, I don't right. make much of it but I get to see it uh -huh. and uh, and uh, and it was great so it was, it's a great life so if you want to keep doing it great Robert if you want to keep doing it <laughs> keep doing it and if you're keep tired of it throw it in move on there's a thousand things to do with your life. Did you did you come up through the ranks? Did you like did you go right in or did you start classes or then I never go into the touring in company? City. I was actually, did you have to do the shitty tours and stuff? Yeah, oh yeah. I yeah. toured for the three years. What was the shitty? We were talking tour. about earlier, remember the casino? On the cruise. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the cruise was not. Oh, the casino. Oh, that wasn't the casino. We were in a casino. We were at a Mucklock Casino in Yakima, Washington. Wow. For two weeks. And the thing is, like, no, Muckle Shoot. Muckluck is a shoot. <laughs> That's even worse. Muckle okay. Shoot. Do you know what she's talking about? She's talking about, before you get to the main stage, Second City actors will tour in Muckle Shoot or something. You just they'll, tour all over. They'll tour all over on you, cruise ships. Is, is Muckle Shoot shit you wear or you go there? That's the name of the that's, casino. That's, that's oh, okay, all right. Muckle but what, Shoot. But what town is it in? Yakima. <laughs> <laughs> and what people, when you, when you're at a show at a casino, you are a loser. You're literally a loser. Because you're not going to go to the show if you're winning money. And so there was, like, there, there was, I, I mean, there was a guy, we were just talking about it today, there was a guy in the front row with his, with a hooker. It's a Yakima hooker. Why did you go to that hotel? And it was like, What are you doing, David? <laughs> and all my wife repeat. is here, please. <laughs> she knows. And then you have to marry her. She knew what she got into. Uh, but yeah, all he did was repeat back what we would say. So like, the guy would be like, hi, welcome to the second event. Hi, welcome to the second city. <laughs> like, like, this is, we're adults. This is what we're doing with our lives. That is lives. so hard. That is such pure torture. It was awful, oh, but awful. it was so fun. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't work at a coal mine. You know what I mean? Like, I can't yeah. complain. Well, how much so... sex did you have in the city? <laughs> <laughs> yes, did you, did you get anything? I'm done? having you right now. <laughs> It's so bad for me. Is it inappropriate? <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't care if it's inappropriate, I just want it to make sense. <laughs> okay, so uh, any, any good background story for Sex in the City? Because there's got to be something. Background story? She wants, yes, I want she's some been digging, scuttlebutt. She's yes. been digging for dirt yeah, no, all I night. Long. Yes, no, I have like, yes. All night long she wants I'm not the only one. She yeah. wants names. Yeah, the I sad do. thing is, is that like when you work on a really good show, which Sex and right. City was, well, was, everybody shows up on time. Yeah. Nobody's right. drunk. Nobody does coke. Nobody sleeps with anybody. Our biggest dirt story was <laughs> our script supervisor was sleeping with one of the grips, 
and he was married, and the pregnant wife showed up on set, set and was like, Ouch. you want to suck his dick? Go ahead. <laughs> He's all yours. <laughs> it was a school supervisor in one of the grips. That's pretty good. But the, thing, the good. sad thing is you work, like, in reports are always asking that, and it's like, Ask me about the shitty shows I worked on. Yeah. People were doing drugs and they were sleeping with hookers and they were doing everything. But how does a show get done that way? I guess that's why oh, it's bad. Well, the bad shows, that's the only way you get through them. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. All right, I, I, can I tell them? I'm going to name oh, two names. I'm gonna oh, good, 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 good. I, no, I don't think I'm ever going to see good. them again. Good. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, mean, it's, I had nothing. I didn't work with either of them, but I was actually. It's the, not me, the, is it? No, no. no. <laughs> there was a play. It was the same story. It was a play called *Lie of the Mind* by Sam Shepard, oh, yeah. and it was on oh. Broadway. It had this amazing cast. It was like it, all these people, wonderful people were in it. Sam Shepard wrote it, and at the time he was he was living with Jessica Lange, right. and and I had a friend who was in the show. Aiden Quinn was in the show. Whom I love, and he's a Chicago actor. He's a who Chicago went to actor. Him he played. Workshop. He, he no, he Hitler played Hitler. Hamlet for me when he was 25 years old. Oh, well, wow. we all have friends. Nice. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And we're all in this. And I, I was hanging out with Aiden, and we all went to a bar, and we're in a pool. We're playing pool, and suddenly Jessica Lange comes in. She bursts in and she grabs a pool cue and she goes, "You're fucking her, aren't you?" And she starts hitting Sam Shepard over the head. <laughs> I just thought that was really. And it was she really came in and did that? Yes, that's absolutely true. She just started beating him on the head, and wow. he's going, "No, no, I didn't. No, no, I didn't." And Famous. she's like throwing, she's throwing. What a reasonable wow. way to deal with Isn't something. Isn't that great? That is great. Isn't that great? I love her. I went and saw King Lear. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> with Brian Dennehy. Yeah. And it was Stacy Keach, actually. Oh, I, well, they're the same. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that play could have sucked. No. And everyone stands. Yeah. It's Chicago yeah. ovation. Right. It's like, right. everyone always stands. Right. Right. And I was like, and then I, the, my boyfriend at the time, he stood right up and I was like. So you were really pissed they were standing up for my show. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't, I wasn't pissed. But I was like, I feel like, did you feel like they stand a lot? Just cause, I am yeah. appalled at people standing up at shows. And it's so they much. stand up at every show. That's I what find I'm it saying. like it kills Who me. Who cares? Do, well, you know what? I'm well. I'm, There'll be no standing up. Yes, yeah, don't stand here. Give us a standing up. Don't stand up. I'll be so pissed. They stand up. Stand 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 for me. I like it. The more expensive the ticket, the more they stand because I paid so much money for this. And then you feel like an asshole because you're like, oh, I guess. Okay, wait. So you don't think they should stand because you have to really earn it? Like it has to be exceptional to stand. Yes. What's the standing standard? Very, very low. It's so low. I think. Yeah, she was good. I'm not saying it wasn't good. I'm just saying. It's nice of you. I saw I saw Wayne Newton in Las Vegas. You left us out. You were on your feet as soon as he came out. You know, he had a little card. No, wait. He had a little card. He had a little card. A little card. You know where it says in one hand it says you know it's like a split of champagne is this, the glass bottle of wine is this, and on the other side of the, of the card. Is he the Don Cashane guy? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you don't know who Wayne Newton is? Yes, he does. No, I just hit him. I just But on the other side of the card it said Mr. Newton is accustomed to and expects a standing ovation oh, after every performance. <laughs> He said he expects it. And you don't want him to feel badly about you for giving him $200. I would have kneeled. I would have squatted. <laughs> I'm on a squatting I'd ovation. Squat. I'd get as tiny as I could. And then you minute. take the napkin and you just kind of like. <laughs> oh, okay, there's one. I got one. I won't name any names. So. Excellent. You fit right in. I heard a rumor that one chef. Uh, I'm not going to say he or she or whatever. A Chicago chef. A Chicago chef. Mike. Uh, <laughs> was... Charlie Trotter. Charlie was... <laughs> no, because they were peeing in Charlie Trotter's mouth, dummy. <laughs> Sorry. And he was oh my God. God. The show was I love that a chef it. is coming and he's taking the room <laughs> down. Oh, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Uh, a, a pastry was being made. Uh, uh, pastry was being made a wedding cake and they didn't have any 
flowers for the decorative whatever. They took the potpourri out of the bathroom. <laughs> onto the cake, served it. $10,000 wedding cake. Um, whatever. You know, it doesn't mean, like, not anymore. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty so. good. So the next time you get married, you might want to double check the potpourri on your wedding cake. I can't say enough wonderful things about Alexander Payne, who won an Academy Award for the movie, um, was it Election for certain, The Descendants and uh, Sideways? Sideways. Yeah. Sideways. Sideways. Some great movies. And he said, being a director is part poet and part bastard. And so, of course, you're a director, but also you, I think of how many people you run in the kitchen, having just been at Nightwood. I mean, you are, no kidding, you're running that well, place like a director, and you guys have something in common. Well, I, I have to say that, I mean, I said this the other night, I have a lot of friends who are chefs. And I think that in many ways, being a director mm. and running a theater is very much like running a restaurant. You gotta, go, or you gotta put it out there between like, let's say seven and 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. And it's a complete improvised performance. Every time, every night is different. And, and whereas, a sh you know, and it is kind of true. You're kind of trying to run the show. You are kind of an asshole and you are kind of a poet and you're trying to put it together. Yes. And you're making a show every night. And it's really funny, just as a theater director, it, it's kind of unusual how many chef friends I have because it's like creating, making. Yeah. I mean, I find, I've found a lot of inspiration from chefs that I know in terms of just pure creativity. That's interesting. I, I always like the, the, the baseball manager analogy for everything. It's like you're, you're trying to put it, your best team on the field and then between inning one and inning nine, you know, you'd have no idea what's gonna happen. But you have a goal. So true you know. to what you're talking about and what you're talking about. And what you do. You know, there, I have limitations, and I understand that really well. So, like, I'm never going to headline a play. I'm never going to headline a TV show. True. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. No, you really know oh, it is. Oh, hey, why babe. would you say that? How bad am I with my lines? <laughs> I, I, I'm lucky if I can get through, a, you know, about 14 lines a day on a good. written page, not That's cocaine. Good. <laughs> no, I, I, I really, it, I, what I haven't done, you know what, it's crazy, you know what's, you know what's crazy about that question is like, I'm one of those guys, I might be limited or I might under, but like I never, in all my years of, of trying to figure out what I was doing and struggling and working in odd jobs and doing stuff, I never, I never yearned, I never dreamed I'd have a house, I never dreamed I'd have a wife, I never dreamed I'd have a, a kid, and we got another one. Yeah, so, I mean, it sounds really like sentimental, but I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, it wasn't, it wasn't, I don't have dreams, I really don't. I never, I, I, I'm grateful just that things landed on top of me. I'm just that old witch in the house landed on me and I'm happy. So, I know it doesn't she make any sense. She wasn't happy, she she landed on her. <laughs> Everyone else was. Oh, that's right. Is it um, any surprise that she's a Bears fan from that kind of voice? <laughs> Sports. I'll say it later. All right. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, wonderful, and then fuck you. Okay, so we're gonna move on to Jason. Uh, he says the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, those are his two favorite words in the kitchen. They uh, they tell you you're supposed to win a James Beard Award and you're supposed to get a Michelin star and all that kind of stuff. Honestly, I don't care. Um, That's it, nice. It's, you it know, frees you up, right? It, when you're not well, focusing. Well, it's just it's you know it's it's. Uh, What's your it, king of pork? Well, they seem know, like, so cool. you know, they have a non-transparency to them that I don't really... Very uh, true. It, it makes it hard to obsess over. It's like, you know, I don't, I, I got no analogy, but it's like, it's, that's unknown and that's out of my control and all I got to do is go in and work. Um, I don't know. Um, owning a restaurant would be cool. Like, yeah. have, you know, having a house. And, Absolutely. Yeah. We'll so, go. We'll all go. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. We'll all Please. go, right? Yeah. 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 We'll all go. One of the beautiful things about Nightwood, if you haven't been there, you can see him working in the kitchen. So it's a very open air kitchen. You've been to Nightwood, yes? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Well, we're gonna taking you because you're from out of town. Katie, have you been? No. Uh, we're all I going. Fuck you. <laughs> 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 